Hello and welcome to the AI with Arun show. We're going to cut through the noise and break down the biggest AI stories from the past week, the week ending August 10th, 2025. Let's get started. Our timeline begins on August 2nd with a landmark moment in regulation. The European Union's AI Act compliance deadlines have officially taken effect. So what do those actually mean? For the first time, we have a global benchmark for AI transparency. Companies operating in the EU are now mandated to publicly disclose information about the data they use to train their AI models. Think of it like a nutrition label for an AI system. You get to see the ingredients. This is a crucial first step towards holding developers accountable and building public trust. Next, on August 3rd, we saw a move that surprised many in the industry. OpenAI, a company famous for keeping its most powerful models proprietary, released its first open-weight reasoning models since GPT-2. Now, open-weight means they're sharing a key part of the model's architecture. This is a perfect, significant pivot. It marks a shift towards a more open-source philosophy, empowering developers and researchers around the world to build upon and experiment with their technology. It's a move that could accelerate innovation across the entire ecosystem. AI infrastructure company Vast Data is now nearing a colossal $30 billion valuation. To put that in perspective, they are being backed by heavyweights like Alphabet's investment arm Capital G and the undisputed king of AI chips, NVIDIA. This tells a clear story. The demand for the foundational hardware and data systems that power AI is exploding. <clears throat> and investors are betting big on the companies building the plumbing for this revolution. And just when you thought the week could not get any more intense, it did. Between August 5th and August 7th, in the, the industry witnessed a tidal wave of major model releases. We saw DeepMind's Genie 3, Anthropic Cloud 4.1, Opus, Google's Gemini OS, and the new model that everyone was waiting for, OpenAI's GPT-5. This was not just a coincidence. It was a clear signal of the ferocious competition among the top AI labs. Each one is racing to claim the top spot in performance, capability, and market share. But this flurry of activity is not happening in a vacuum. It's having a massive ripple effect across the entire economy. Big tech is set to invest a mind-boggling $350 billion in AI this year alone, with Microsoft and Alphabet leading the charge with commitments of $30 billion and $85 billion, respectively. This spending frenzy is fueled by a surge on Wall Street pushing the S&P 500 to new highs and boosting US GDP by an estimated 0.7%. However, this rapid growth also brings rising risks of market volatility, something analysts are watching very closely. Just look at Meta. It pulled in over 47 billion in its second quarter, largely thanks to AI enhancing its advertising across its massive user base. The AI boom is also driving major consolidation. In a blockbuster deal, cybersecurity leader Palo Alto Networks announced its acquisition of CyberArk for $25 billion. This strategy here is clear. Integrate CyberArk AI-driven security tools to build a fortress capable of defending against the next generation of AI-powered cyber attacks. This is about using AI to fight AI. You will find a link in the description of a deep dive session that we did particularly on this deal on the AI with our own show. Now, it's not just about the private sector either. The US government is officially getting on board. The General Services Administration, or GSA, has now approved OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google's Gemini, and Anthropic's Claude for use across federal agencies. This is done through pre-negotiated contracts, making it much easier for government bodies to adopt these powerful tools and support the domestic AI industry. And finally, AI is getting deeper into our homes and even our cars. This week, electronics giant Xiaomi unveiled its next generation of AI voice model. They're positioning it as a central nervous system for their entire ecosystem of products, from smart home devices to their new electric vehicles. This is the vision of truly ambient computing, where AI seamlessly connects all the technology in your life. Now let's zoom in on the biggest release of the week, OpenAI's GPT-5. Launched on August 7, it was hailed by CEO Sam Altman as a significant step towards a path towards AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence. He described it as, as being like 
talking to a PhD level expert in anything. It was touted for major breakthroughs in reasoning and coding and was made immediately available to all users, both free and paid. The hype was immense, but the reality proved to be far more complicated. Almost immediately, the backlash began. First, reports surfaced of elementary errors. The supposed PhD level intelligence was reportedly struggling with some basic spelling and geography tasks. But the real firestorm came from the user base. In launching GPT-5, OpenAI deprecated its popular predecessor, GPT-4.0, and users were not happy. A massive revolt erupted online with people demanding the return of the older model, which they preferred for its creative and collaborative abilities. The outcry was so intense that OpenAI had to make a swift reversal. Sam Artman himself tweeted, OK, we, are here, we hear you all on 4.0, and the company quickly reinstated access. The entire episode was incredibly revealing. It exposed a fundamental tension between OpenAI's stated goal, the pursuit of superhuman general intelligence, and what many users actually want and value from an AI assistant today. They don't just want a cold logical machine. They value creativity, they value collaboration and personalization, the very soft qualities that GPT-5 seemed to have sacrificed in its quest for hard skills like logic and coding. Now, as OpenAI was dealing with this user revolt, its biggest rival, Google, was launching a powerful counteroffensive under the banner of Project Chimera. But Google's strategy is fundamentally different. Instead of trying to build one single all-knowing AI, Google is rolling out a suite of highly specialized domain-specific tools designed for practical, real-world workflows. Take Jules, for example. It's an autonomous AI coding agent. It can clone code, repositories, fix bugs, run tests, and manage dependencies all in its own, reportedly reducing debugging time by 35% on large projects. Then there is Gemini 2.5 DeepThink. Exclusive to AI Ultra subscribers, this model uses what Google calls parallel thinking to explore multiple hypotheses at once. Its power was demonstrated when it each when it achieved a gold medal performance at the International Mathematical Olympiad, a truly remarkable feat. This is a strategy of targeted strikes, focusing on defensible niches and pushing hard into the next frontier, which is agentic AI. So let's quickly recap the two competing philosophies that we are seeing. OpenAI is pursuing a single all-purpose model with GPT-5 optimized for general intelligence and hard skills like logic and coding. Google, on the other hand, is taking a more surgical approach. They're building a toolbox of specialized agentic AI systems designed to integrate into specific enterprise workflows, focusing on providing immediate practical value rather than winning a generalist performance benchmark. Two very different paths to the future of AI. Now, away from the corporate competition, let's talk about this technology where it's having perhaps the most profound impact, which is scientific discovery. We are seeing AI accelerate breakthroughs in fields like biotechnology and material science. For instance, the company Profluent Bio has created Open CRISPR one This is the world's first gene editing enzyme designed entirely by an AI. The system trained on half a billion protein sequences invented novel enzymes that could match or even exceed the performance of those found in nature. The applications for medicine are astounding. In a fight against misinformation, scientists discovered a universal deep fake detector with 98% accuracy across different platforms. It works on both synthetic audio and video and is already being evaluated for use by media and law enforcement. And at MIT and Duke, Researchers used machine learning to design tougher plastics that are significantly more resistant to tearing. The AI identified special molecules called mechanophores that act like tiny shock absorbers, dissipating force that would otherwise cause the material to crack. But with great power comes great responsibility. And this week highlighted a major philosophical divide on the issue of AI safety. On August 4th, Elon Musk's company XAI launched a new image generator called the Grok Imagine, but it came with a controversial feature, an explicit allowance for generating not safe for work 
or NSFW content. This is a direct challenge to the safety first approach of its competitors and represents a clash between a tech libertarian worldview and the more cautious corporate stewardship model we see from companies like Google and OpenAI. Another battleground is copyright. The core conflict is a simple one. AI companies claim a right to train their models on public data, while creators argue they have a right to property over their work. This clash is now going global. In Japan, the media giant Yumiri Shimbom is suing Perplexity AI for nearly 19 million, alleging over 100,000 of its articles were used without permission. And in South Korea, there is a split. One network, KBS, is partnering with the AI company Naver, while other networks are suing Naver for scraping their content. The outcomes of these legal fights will set critical precedents for the future economics of both industries. Perhaps nowhere are the stakes higher than the use of AI with children. And here we see a profound ethical paradox. On the one hand, AI is being promoted as a powerful learning tool. This week, California announced a landmark partnership with tech companies to expand AI literacy programs in schools. But at the same time, an Associated Press report exposed the widespread use of AI surveillance software in thousands of school districts in the US. Systems like Gaggle and Lightspeed Alert are monitoring everything students write on school-issued account and devices. So we are simultaneously promoting AI as a tool for empowerment while deploying it as an instrument of pervasive surveillance. Given all these complex issues, it's no surprise that governments are starting to step in. We are seeing the first concrete steps towards regulation. The US Transportation Secretary announced an investigation into the use of AI for personalized or what some might call discriminatory airline ticket rising. As we mentioned earlier, the EU's AI Act is now being implemented, forcing transparency. And the US government has created official guidelines for which AI models can be purchased and used by federal agencies. This is the start of a long road, but it shows regulators are finally beginning to address consumer protection in the AI era. And finally, let's not forget the importance of fundamental research that drives all of this progress. As an example, the University of Iowa has received a $300,000 grant from the National Science Foundation. A team there is working on improving the diffusion models that generate images and text with the goal of developing new methods to make these powerful AI tools significantly faster and more reliable for everyone. As we look back on this incredibly busy week, four key trends stand out. First, agentic AI. We're seeing a clear shift from simple chatbots to autonomous AI systems that can complete complex multi-step tasks on their own. Second, regulatory evolution. This is no longer a conversation just for tech circles. Governments are taking their first real steps to regulate specific consumer-facing AI applications. Third, the copyright battles. The global legal challenges over training data are heating up and will fundamentally shape the future of content and AI. And fourth, scientific applications. AI is proving to be a revolutionary tool for accelerating major breakthroughs in science and medicine. These trends collectively show an industry innovating at breakneck pace, but also grappling with critical debates about safety, economics, and ethics. That brings us to the end of our weekly debrief. The pace of change is undeniable and staying informed is more important than ever. Thank you for watching. If you found this useful, please like, share, subscribe for more insights into the world of AI and support our work by joining us as a member.